Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for July 26, 2024. Here we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. Our goal is to hear all of the Bible by the end of December 2024, to increase our faith, to please the Heavenly Father, to walk in the abundant life that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, redeemed for us by His blood, His death, and His resurrection on the cross at Calvary, and to do the works of the greater works that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said we would do in the book of John 14:12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And some of those works in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17 through 18, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. 18. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. We know in the name of Jesus Christ to increase our faith. Romans 10, 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And to please the heavenly Father, Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of John, chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Amen? Verse 10, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And Psalm 23, 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 8 to 10 reads, But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And John fifteen seven through 8, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Proverbs 11.30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. And Mark 16.15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We know from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Who himself, meaning Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And John fourteen six to 7 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. And we are living in the age of having received the Holy Spirit because our Heavenly Father, John 4, 23, 24, but the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Verse 24, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And our Lord and Savior, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16, said, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And the book, and verse 26 but the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And John sixteen thirteen. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the words of life that we shall hear today are Psalm 99, Proverb 26. The Old Testament reading will be from Second Chronicles, 
chapter 35, verse 1 through chapter 36, verse 23. And the New Testament reading will be from the book of James, chapter 5, verse 1 through 20. The Psalm and the Proverbs will be read from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. The Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading will be from the Amplified Version of the Bible, copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1964, 1965, 1987 by the Lockman Foundation, used by permission, all rights reserved. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are receiving the grace to walk in those promises and to do the works and the greater works that our Lord and Savior said we would do. Amen. In the book of John chapter 14 verse 12. I would humbly ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would share Jesus for all too with another that you would subscribe and that you would give it the hand symbol indicating that the reading is acceptable in your sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all for your support and encouragement in Jesus' name. And now Psalm 99. The theme of Psalm 99 is praise for God's fairness and holiness. Because God is perfectly just and fair, we can trust him completely. And it reads, The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. He dwells between the cherubim, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy, for the king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity, you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. 5. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool. He is holy. 6. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. 7. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. 8. He answered them, O Lord our God, you were to them God who forgives, though you took vengeance on their deeds. 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the grace to be holy as well. For your word in Peter says, Be holy, for I am holy. And we are your children, so it only is fitting. Thank you for giving us that grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now Proverbs 26, and it reads, As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a flittering sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Verse 7. Like the legs of the lame that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like one who binds a stone in a sling is he who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. The great God who formed everything gives the fool his hire, and the transgressor his wages. 11. As a dog returns to his own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. 12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Verse 13. The lazy man says, There is a lion in the road. A fierce lion is in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. It wearies him to bring it back to his mouth. 16. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. 17. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own is like one who takes a dog by the ears, like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. 20. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no tail-bearer, strife ceases. 
As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to a to kindle strife. 22. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the innermost body. Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. 27. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. 28. And last. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. And now the Old Testament reading. Continuing today with the book of Second Chronicles with chapter 35. And it reads, Josiah kept the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem. They killed the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their positions and encouraged them in the service of the house of the Lord. 3. To the Levites who taught all Israel and who were holy to the Lord, he said, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, built. It shall no longer be a burden carried on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves according to your father's houses by your divisions, after the directions of David, king of Israel, and of Solomon, his son. 5. And stand in the holy court of the priest, according to the sections of the father's, father's families of your kinsmen, the common people, and let there be a section of the Levites to attend to each division of the families of the people. 6. Kill the Passover lambs and sanctify yourselves, and prepare for your brethren to do according to the word of the Lord of the Lord by Moses. 7. Then Josiah contributed to the lay people's lambs and kids of the flocks as Passover offerings for all who were present, to the number of 30,000 and 3,000 young bulls, all from the king's possessions. And his princes gave for a free will offering to the people, to the priests and the Levites, Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, chief officers of God's house, gave the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 lambs and kids and 300 bulls. 9. Conaniah also and Shemaiah and Nethanel, his brothers, and Hasbiah, Jael, and Josabad, chiefs of the Levites, gave to the Levites for Passover offerings 5,000 lambs and kids and 500 bulls. 10. When the service was ready, the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their divisions, as the king commanded. And they killed the Passover lambs, and the priests sprinkled the blood they received from the Levites who skinned the animals. 12. Then they removed the burnt offerings, that they might distribute them according to the divisions of the lay families, to offer to the Lord, as directed in the book of Moses. And so they did with the bulls. 13. And they roasted the Passover lambs in the fire, with fire according to the ordinance, and they cooked the holy offerings in pots, in cauldrons, and in pans, and carried them quickly to all the people. 14. Afterward the Levites prepared for themselves and the priests, because the priests and the sons of Aaron were busy in offering the burnt offerings and the fat until night. So the Levites prepared for themselves and also for the priests, the sons of Aaron. 15. The singers, the sons of Asap, were in their places according to the command of David, Asap, Heman, and Judathan, the king's seer. And the gatekeepers were at every gate. They did not need to leave their service, for their brethren the Levites prepared for them. 16. So all the Lord's service was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the Lord's altar, as King Josiah commanded. And the Israelites who were present kept the Passover at that time, and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread for seven days. 18. 
No Passover like it had been kept in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet, even by any of the kings of Israel, as was kept by Josiah and the priests, the Levites and all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. 19. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah, the Passover was kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, went out to fight against Karshemish of the Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But Necho sent ambassadors to Josiah, saying, What have I to do with you, you king of Judah? I came not against you this day, but against the house with which I am at war. And God has commanded me to make haste, refrain from opposing God, who is with me, lest he destroy you. Yet Josiah would not turn away from him, but disguised himself in order to fight with him. He did not heed the words of Necho from the mouth of God, but came to fight with him in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Take me away, for I am severely wounded. 24. So his servants took him out of the chariot, and put him in his second chariot, and brought him to Jerusalem. And he died, and was buried in the tomb of his fathers. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. 25. Jeremiah gave a lament for Josiah, and all the singing men and women have spoken of Josiah in their laments to this day. They made them an ordinance in Israel. Behold, they are written in the laments. L Lamentations 4.20 Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his deeds, according to what is written in the law of the Lord, and his acts from first to last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Chapter 36 Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was then twenty-three years old, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Then the king of Egypt disposed him at Jerusalem, and fined the land a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim, Jehoahaz's brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But Necho took Jehoiahaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters and took him to Babylon. 7. Nebuchadnezzar also took some of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple or palace there. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and the abominations which he did and what was found against him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. 10. In the spring, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the precious vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah, the, the boy's brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. 12. He did evil in the sight of the Lord God, and did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet, who spoke at the direction of the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God. He stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord, the God of Israel. Also, all the chiefs of the priests and the people trespassed greatly in accord with all the abominations of the heathen, and they polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. 15. And the Lord, the God of their fathers, sent to them persistently by his messengers, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God and despising his words and scoffing at his prophets, till the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, so there was no remedy or healing. Verse 17. Therefore he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or hoary head. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasuries of the Lord's house, of the king of, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. 19. And they burned God's house, and broke down Jerusalem's wall, and burned all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its choice vessels. 
20 those who had escaped from the sword he took away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons also until the kingdom of Persia was established there 21 to fulfill the Lord's word by Jeremiah till the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths for as long as it lay desolate it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years 22 now in the first year of Cyprus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyprus king of Persia so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing 23 thus says Cyprus king of Persia all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord the God of heaven has given me and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah whoever there is among you of all his people may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem and in the name of Jesus Christ this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers and now the New Testament reading continuing today in the book of James with chapter 5 and it reads come now you rich people weep aloud and lament over the miseries the woes that are surely coming upon you your abundant wealth has rotted and is ruined and your many garments have become moth-eaten your gold and silver are completely rusted through and their rust will be testimony against you and it will be devour and it will devour your flesh as if it were fire you have heaped together treasure for the last days for but look here are the wages that you have withheld by fraud from the laborers who have reaped your reaped your fields carrying out for vengeance and the cries of the harvesters have come to the ears of the Lord of hosts here on earth you have abandoned yourselves to soft prodigal living and to the pleasures of self-indulgence and self-gratification you have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter you have condemned and have murdered the righteous innocent man while he offers no resistance to you seven so be patient brethren as you wait till the coming of the Lord see how the farmer waits expectantly for the precious harvest from the land see how he keeps up his patient vig vigil over it until it receives the early and latter rains eight so you also must be patient establish your hearts strengthen and confirm them in the final certainty for the coming of the Lord is very near nine do not complain brethren against one another so that you yourselves may not be judged look the judge is already standing at the very door verse 10 as an example of suffering and ill treatment together with patience brethren take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as his messengers 11 you know how we call those blessed happy who were steadfast who endured you have heard of the endurance of job and you have seen the lord's purpose and how he richly blessed him in the end inasmuch as the lord is fully full of pity and compassion and tenderness and mercy 12 but above all things my brethren do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath but let your yes be a simple yes and your no be a simple no so that you may not sin and fall under condemnation 13 is anyone among you afflicted ill-treated suffering evil you should pray is anyone glad at heart he should sing praise to God is anyone among you sick he should call in the church elders the spiritual guides and they shall pray over him anointing him with oil in the Lord's name and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick and the Lord will restore him and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven 16 confess to one another therefore your faults your slips and your false steps your offenses your sins and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working 17 Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have with feelings affections and a constitution like ours and he prayed earnestly for it not to rain and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months 
1 Kings 17, 1. And then he prayed again, and the heavens supplied rain, and the land produced its crops, as usual. 1 Kings 18, 42-45. 19, my brethren, if anyone among you strays from the truth and falls into error, and another person brings him back to God. 20. Let the latter one be sure that whoever turns a sinner from his evil course will save that one's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins, procure the pardon of the many sins committed by the convert. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers. And now our prayer Psalm 82 and it reads God stands in the congregation of the mighty he judges among the gods how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked Selah defend the poor and fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy for deliver the poor and needy free them from the hand of the wicked Five, they do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Six, I said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Seven, but you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Eight, and last, arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, or every of us to hear us, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you that you, the Most High God, stand supreme in the assembly of gods, as the God of gods. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you judge justly for me, my family, my little ones, my brethren, my pastors, and your church, and show no partiality to the wicked. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you are a just God, delivering justice to the weak, the fatherless, and maintaining my rights whenever I, my family, my little ones, my brethren, my pastors, my church, are afflicted and needy. In the midst of a wicked world, you are our avenger. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that I walk in the light upon the rock, a firm foundation in principles, even as the administration of justice is shaking in this world. But thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you have called me a God, able to judge on your behalf as your representative, because I am your child the child of the Most High. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name and Holy Spirit that you watch over me. Give me a sober and vigilant heart by the Holy Spirit who lives in me. Grant unto me the excellent skill in the use of the sword of the Spirit, which is your word, that I continue to live as a child of God and not die as a man and fall like one of the princes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have arisen in your glory over the earth and over my life. I thank you in Jesus' name that you, my Father, my God, my Redeemer, and Lord, have given me salvation and the forgiveness of sins, and have given me the keys to the kingdom of heaven, as you said in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for instructing us by your word and the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And thank you for your anointing and power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And we thank you, Father, for sending your holy son, Jesus, to die on the cross on the tree for us, that by his stripes we were healed. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that as we received your word today, we are healed. And we have been delivered in the name of Jesus Christ from every destructive thing in our lives, every addictive spirit, every bad character, every lack in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that by your stripes we are healed and that we have been delivered by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.